fans, Rob Johnson here for another episode. Sorry I wasn't with you guys most of the week, but I'm back now for a show here on Friday. We're going to talk uh, all sports. We're going to get into a lot of things today. First, let me start off and say last night I covered for my newspaper, the NKCC News. Congratulations out to the New Kent Lay Trojans as they will be moving on to the Class B region uh, on Tuesday. have no idea who they'll be playing right now, but I definitely will be out for that game. Uh, remarkable season so far for these young ladies. Uh, very proud of what they're doing. Let me also give a shout out to the Lafayette Lady Rams, especially Emily Sullivan. A senior, 6'1", she played a remarkable game. Um, I really believe that uh, she was the reason they were as close as they were and they had as good a uh, record as they did, 8-6 and six overall this season. Just a good team, a team that I enjoyed watching. So a shout out to them, the Lafayette Lady Rams, as they brought their A game, but the New Kent Lady Trojans won in three sets as they have not dropped a set in these Region A playoffs. So we'll look forward to that on Tuesday. Uh, also, I wanted to give a shout out to the WNBA tonight for the Dallas Wings, a team that has lost a lot of critical pieces in the last few years, but I am happy to say that they really retooled last night. The Wings with the number one pick via the New York Liberty pick, uh, Charlie Collier, center from Texas. That's huge right in the backyard. Also, the Dallas Wings, Awak uh, Collier, uh, she's a power forward out of Finland. Also, the Wings at the fifth pick get Chelsea Dungy, uh, Arkansas shooting guard. And then you look at Dallas again at number 13, the second round, via the New York Liberty again, uh, Dana Evans, point guard from Louisville. Um, you look at this and you really think, hey, uh, the New York Liberty have given up a lot of picks. Um, you know, they have their superstar in place. But I really think that these picks are going to help Dallas uh, really emerge, maybe not this season, but maybe next year uh, as a contender. Just a lot of good picks. You can also look at Atlanta Dream, um, Ari McDonald, uh, point guard from Arizona. Um, you know, you just uh, you you know just a lot of decent players who came out of this draft. Uh, Jazz Walker via the Dallas Wings goes number seven to the Los Angeles Sparks. The Chicago Sky number eight, who's already retooled their roster. Uh, Shayla Hill, uh, Australia point guard, Minnesota Lynx, Raina Davis, Tennessee. Uh, Sparks, uh, Stephanie Watts from North Carolina. Um, so a lot of decent players out of this draft. It's going to be a very interesting WNBA season. Um, you know, a lot of people are expecting big things out of the usual teams. But we'll have to see. Uh, still in this COVID type of atmosphere, things can get kind of crazy. So we'll see which team can emerge uh, from the WNBA um, as your champion. As last year was very exciting. In the WNBA, as Seattle won another championship, as in my opinion, they have the um, best player in the league in um, Brianna Stewart. Anyway, we move on to other sports here. NFL draft news. I was looking at some articles and I saw here that Mr. Charlie Casserly has, in his mock draft 2.0, has Washington moving up to take Trey Lance. Folks, let me let me just say this, and I'm gonna say it again. I believe Trey Lance is probably a nice guy. I believe Trey Lance probably has a decent arm. He has nice athleticism, etc. But Washington cannot make this mistake. If you're Washington, you do not make a move for a quarterback until next year. 2022 will be the year of the quarterback. Yes, we have already have Trevor Lawrence. We have Justin Fields. Uh, you know these other quarterbacks, which I don't really believe in. I mean, it. it I really feel that a guy like um, Justin Fields should drop to the 20s, like Aaron Rodgers. You know, get to a good team like the Pittsburgh Steelers, etc. But the only clear-cut great quarterback is Trevor Lawrence. When it comes to Zach Wilson, I believe Zach Wilson needs to go to the right system. I'm not saying that New York, New Jersey is not the right place for him to go. However, I think a San Francisco, a Denver, places like that would be a much better atmosphere for him. I don't think going to that New York market and just the Jets overall 
um, history of having quarterbacks and not succeeding, and you're going into a system with another defensive coach, what does this remind you of? It reminds you of Rex Ryan back in the day when they got to those AFC Championship games, but he was never really comfortable with Mark Sanchez. You have to remember that. Uh, the Jets, I thought, would go more offensive, but they just, you know, had Adam Gase. So, you know, maybe they're thinking, let's go defense. But, you know, I, I just don't think the Jets are the right spot for a Zach Wilson. I don't think that... Um, and getting back to the Trey Lance point, I don't think Trey Lance being a first-round quarterback is smart. Um, I think he's a developmental quarterback. Um, if, in my opinion, if you're going to take him, it's anywhere from the second to the fourth round. Uh, I'm not saying he won't be good in the league. What I'm saying is that he's going to need time. And picking him in the top ten is not going to help you. It's not going to help your team. It's not going to help the development of your, of your players. It's not going to help you as a coach hang on to your job. What I'm saying is that a lot of these um, non-quarterbacks are very, very good. I mean, good to even great. Uh, you look at some of the skill positions uh, from, the, from, the, from the wide receiver to the tight ends to the, the cornerbacks to your offensive line, defensive tackle, linebackers. I think that they are much deeper than your quarterback position. Of course, like I said, you have Trevor Lawrence, who I think is great. You have Justin Fields, who was on that borderline great. But these other guys, like Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, these guys, in my opinion, need to go to the right system. And going too early in the first round, I feel like could put a lot of pressure on these guys. So they really need to be careful in how they put these guys in certain categories. Uh, I think we've had way too much time to analyze these things. And what I mean by that is, is that I mean, Trevor Lawrence is the clear-cut number one. He's the best quarterback in this draft. You know, if you go back and ask this question a couple years ago, people would say you're crazy. You can't compare. Now, I think I was on, well, I'm not going to say I think, but I was listening to radio yesterday. I, don't, I was listening to XM Satellite Radio, and I don't remember who the guy was, but he was saying that Zach Wilson compares to Trevor Lawrence. No, no, sir. No, sir. Zach Wilson is a very good quarterback. I even, um, you know, put it out there that I thought that Zach deserved Heisman Trophy uh, consideration when a lot of people laughed in my face. They were like, oh, oh, this guy from BYU, who is he now? Everybody's on his jock. And that's just the bottom line. You know, that's the thing that really pisses me off about this business. People will listen to your ideas, tell you that your ideas are crap. And then next thing you know, everybody's on TV, on the Facebook, on the Instagram, talking about how great this guy is. You were just saying he was trash. Now you want to praise the guy because you took somebody else's ideas. So, but hey, I'm used to my ideas being taken. But hey, that's another story for another day. But like I said, Zach Wilson is a very good quarterback. He's a decent quarterback. But to me, it's all about spots. Trevor Lawrence, it doesn't matter where he goes. He can go to the Jets. He can go to the Jaguars. He's going to kill it in the NFL. But guys, like I said, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Trey Lance, it all depends on the system these guys go to. You can't just stick them in any system and say, hey, these guys are going to be able to go and be just the, the greatest things in sliced bread. That's not how it works. And um, I think teams have to be very careful that they don't run into a situation where they're drafting guys just to draft them because they say they're quarterback. So that's just how I feel about that. Now, let's go to the NBA. We're gonna, I'm going to give you guys a standing so far of what we have. I'm going to give you one through the one through eight seeds in each uh, conference. Right now, we have the Philadelphia 76ers, number one in the East. Number two, the Brooklyn Nets. Number three, the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Number four, the Atlanta Hawks. Number five, the Boston Celtics. Number six, the New York Knicks. Number seven, the Miami Heat. And number eight, the Charlotte Hornets. Now, mind you, these teams are tight. From four through eight, the teams are, I would, what is it, about two game difference. Uh, the Hornets are ten and a half back. Uh, the Heat are ten games back. The Knicks are nine and a half back. The Celtics are eight and a half. And the Atlanta Hawks are eight and a half. The teams that have clearly separated themselves are Philadelphia, Brooklyn, and Milwaukee, as those are your top 
uh, three seeds. Everybody else is very fluid. Now you go nine through 11, the Pacers are 11 and a half back. The Bulls are number 10, 15 and a half back. The Raptors are 16 and a half back. And the Wizards are 16 and a half back as well in the number 12 slot. So uh, right now, 12 through one, I believe it's the top 11 seed to get the play-in game. Um, you know, the Cavaliers are trying to make a push, uh, but I don't think they'll get there. Orlando Magic, who I thought were going to be better coming into the regular season, um, have just fallen off, and the Detroit Pistons have fallen off as well. Now, let's go to the West. At number one, the Utah Jazz. Then we have the Phoenix Suns at two, the Clippers at three, the Nuggets at four, the Lakers at five, the Portland Trail Blazers at six, the Dallas Mavericks at seven, and the Memphis Grizzlies at number eight. Um, the West right now is kind of defined in a lot of ways because you have the Utah Jazz sitting at 41 and 14, clearly the best team, but they're only a game up on the Phoenix Suns. The Clippers are only three games out. Um, the Nuggets are six games out, but the biggest thing that they could do was would probably get the three seed. But at this point, that won't even really matter. The Lakers are a game and a half out of the four seed behind the Nuggets. Uh, that's probably the best that they would get there. I don't think they're catching the Los Angeles Clippers by any stretch of the imagination. Now, number nine, we have the Golden State Warriors, and then we have the Spurs at 10, and then the Pelicans at 11. The Kings uh, have, have continued to make a major drop off, so it does not look like they'll get into that 11 seed uh, as they are uh, continue to falter. Uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder, number 13, 21 games out. The Houston Rockets is dismal. Uh, the reverse of the Utah Jazz at 14 and 41, and then you got the Minnesota Timberwolves, who again are last in the um, the West. I mean, I don't know if they're trying to continue the style of to, to you know to um, pile up draft picks at number one or what, but I mean it, it's just horrible. The Minnesota Timberwolves franchise is just absolutely horrible, and I I I, I just get that you think they have talent, you think they have players that. Uh, are gonna rise to the occasion, and they never do. It's just a disappointing franchise, a franchise that a lot of us are just sick and tired of watching, in my opinion. Now, let's go back to last night as we talk about the NBA. We'll talk about some of the games uh, that happened last night. As the Lakers lost to the Boston Celtics, 121-113. to uh, Jalen Brown had 40 points, nine rebounds, three assists. Mind you, this was without LeBron James or Anthony Davis. I think this is a great sign as the Lakers were down early, like 21 to seven. Then they were able to get back into the game. They were in the game most of most of the time, but the Boston Celtics pulled away as their superstars came to play. But I, I again think this is a great sign for the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, Tatum had 14, Kimba had 12, Marcus Smart had 15, and Tristan Thompson had 14 points, which was huge for the Boston Celtics. On the Lakers side, their leading scorer was Marcus Gasol. I'm sorry, not Marcus Gasol. Marcus Gasol had 18 points, but uh, Horton Tucker had 19. Uh, you had Harrell with 12. Ben, like, ben um, McLemore had 17. Uh, Kuzma only had 13. Very disappointing uh, for Kyle Kuzma. If he could have put up at least 25 points, the Lakers could have win, been in this game or even won this game. So disappointing from that aspect. Uh, but you can say that the Lakers are continuing to improve and show improvement, which is a good thing when their top dogs get back, when Drummond, when uh, LeBron, when Anthony Davis get back, they might be a team that could be unstoppable. That might be just unstoppable in the Western Conference. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, another win. They beat the Atlanta Hawks 120-109. The Golden State Warriors defeated the Cavaliers 119 to 101. The Suns continue to roll 122 to 114 over the Sacramento Kings. Now tonight we have games starting at 8 o'clock. We have, and these are critical games now because a lot of these teams are trying to get that play in. They have to continue to win. This game, for example, Bulls versus Memphis versus the Memphis Grizzlies. The Bulls have to get this win. They have to come out. They have to. Uh, go hard because Memphis is hungry. Memphis wants to make the playoffs. Uh, Utah and Indiana, the Pacers, have to continue to play hard. Um, so um, they got the tough road game against Utah. Oklahoma City and Detroit, irrelevance uh, at, its, at its finest. Pelicans, Wizards, very important game. Both teams trying to make that last playoffs play-in game. Um, 
Clippers, uh, 76ers. That game is at 7 p.m. Terrific game. We'll see what the results are, uh, of that are. Uh, we'll see if the 76ers will continue to roll and keep that number one seed in the East. Magic and Raptors. Raptors are just trying to continue to hold on to the last playoff seed. Uh, Hornets and Nets. Big game for the Hornets. They have to come out and play hard against the Nets. Uh, Nuggets, Raptors, uh, just a pushover game for the Nuggets. Heat versus Timberwolves. Be careful here. Sometimes the Timberwolves can turn it up, but I think the Heat will get the win. Portland and San Antonio. Uh, tough game because it's always tough playing San Antonio, but the Trailblazers need this game. Then at 930, we have, I believe, a game that should be the game of the day. Well, second game of the day is New York Knicks against the Dallas Mavericks. Important game for the Knicks. Important for the Knicks to come out, continue to win, trying to get out of that eight seed, get closer and closer to that six or five seed if you are the New York Knicks. So a lot of good games today in the NBA. Like I said, starting at 3 p.m. and then going from there. As we go back to the NFL, let's talk about Aaron Donald news. As it's being reported that he will possibly face assault charges after a bar fight in Pittsburgh. They don't have all the facts, etc. Now, this is what I'll say. In this day and time, folks, if you are an NFL player, NBA, um, baseball, whatever, get your ass out the club. This ain't that 70s, this ain't the 80s, this ain't even the 90s. Get your ass out the clubs. You know, do something more constructive at home. You know, I'm not saying that you can't go out sometimes, but you have to understand that people are lurking. People are out here to make you um, go from five star to one star. It's a lot of haters out here, folks. Um, you know, if you're going to go out, make sure you have security. If you're going to go out, make sure you have a crew with you that is a bunch of responsible guys who are going to make sure that you don't get yourself into any trouble. Uh, you're going to have people that are going to approach you. People are going to try you. Unfortunately, people don't have anything else better to do with their lives other than walk up to a professional football player, an actor, a rapper, and try to get the quote unquote bag. That's all they're trying to do, trying to get you to react. And the thing is, folks, we've seen so many bad examples of simple, I'm not gonna call it simple violence by just punching, but you know, when you're just getting to a fight, nobody is, I mean, you may have injuries here or there, but you don't have death. But when you start talking about people getting retaliation, guns, knives, etc., um, you know, it's it's a slippery slope. And like I said, I know it's hard for guys to not want to, you know, stay in the house or be more disciplined and, you know, just do something at home. I understand quarantine has been hard. You know, being at home has been hard. But folks, you've got to realize that the world is a dangerous place especially if you are um, a professional athlete. So you have money, you have the ability to entertain yourself, you have the ability to bring the party to you. Do that, you know, going out to these clubs, going out to these social events, or like I said, people are trying to test you. People are trying to make sure that, in some cases, you don't make it back home to your family. Um, we live in a very evil world. And um, if you're a guy like Aaron Donald, you're one of the best defensive players in the league. You're starting to etch, etch your name as one of the better defensive players of all time. And you cannot get yourself caught up into a situation like this. And, you know, it's sad because we always tell the athletes they can't get themselves caught up. But we all know what the court of public opinion is. You know, whether you're innocent, whether you're guilty, it doesn't matter. You know, you got these trolls out here. You got these uh, so-called journalists who all they want to do is get a headline by saying Aaron Donald this, Aaron Donald that. I'm with you, Aaron Donald. I think that, you know, from all things I've heard, you're a decent dude. I just want you to take heed to my advice. Coordinate here, I guess you could say, especially when it comes to a young African-American male who's rich, who is on top of his game. There are a lot of people out here who want to see you fall, brother. Even the people who look like you want to see you fail. So I'm just saying, man, you know, try to be more careful in what you do 
and try to be more careful in the type of decisions that you make. If this is true, if this is not true, we'll see. Just saying, man, hope you have a long-lasting career, and hopefully none of this crap will delay any of that. So I'll leave that at that. Now, let's get to some baseball news, folks, and this will be the last topic of the day. As we go through and look at the standings for the MLB, which so far has been, I guess you could say kind of shocking in a way, because you have a lot of teams who are in first place you didn't think would be in first place, even though we have a long standing, have a long standing season ahead of us with 162 games back. So let's look at the American League first. The Boston Red Sox, nine and four on top of the AL least. Next you have the Blue Jays at six and seven, the Yankees at five and seven, the Orioles at five and eight, and then the Rays at five and eight. I believe the Rays would have a little bit of a decline, but not this much. Uh, still early in the season, but I'm just saying, you know, you want your teams to have a better start than this. In the AL Central, the Royals are seven and four, the Indians are seven and five, the White Sox six and seven, uh, the Tigers are six and seven, and the Twins are six and seven. So very competitive division in the AL Central. AL West, the Seattle Mariners, <laughs> great win yesterday, by the way, in Baltimore. They uh, are 8-5, the Angels are 7-5, and five. the uh, Houston Astros are 6-6, six and six. the Athletics are 6-7, and seven. and the Rangers are 6-7. and seven. So a lot of the divisions so far are very competitive, and I think that's what we like to see in baseball. Now, looking at the NL, another batch of just competitive teams, uh, you know, all around. First, we start with the NL East, we have the Mets at 5-3, and three. the Phillies at 6-6. Six and six. Uh, and some of these games because of postponements, etc. So you may look at the record and say, why aren't they in first place? But, you know, with COVID and then some games being suspended or whatnot, you know. So we just have to roll with the punches for now. Phillies are 6-6. Six and six, The Marlins are 5-7. and seven, The Braves are 5-8. and eight, And the Nationals sit at 3-7 and seven in fifth place. In the NL Central, the Cincinnati Reds continue from last year, 7-5. and five. The Brewers, 7-5. and five. The Cardinals are 6-6. Six and six. The Cubs are five and seven, and the uh, Pirates are five and eight, only two and a half games back with their forty-plus million dollar um, <laughs> uh, budget. I guess you could call it. They only, only that's all they have is forty million dollars invested in their players, and they're two and a half games out. Um, that's remarkable. Now let's go to the NL West, where the Dodgers are eleven and two, the San Francisco Giants are eight and four. Who's shocked? The Giants never stay down for long, right? The San Diego Padres are 9-5, Arizona Diamondbacks 5-8, and, and the Colorado Rockies are looking real, real one-ish right now. When I say one-ish, I mean it looks like they'll be picking number one as they are 3-10. and 10. Not a very good baseball team right now. Uh, now let's look at some of the games today as the Atlanta Braves played the Chicago Cubs. Both teams trying to get back into the division, so critical uh, three-game series for both teams. Now let's look at some of... The other games that we will be having tonight in Major League Baseball. All right, let's start here. The Cardinals are playing the Phillies at 7:05. Rays and Yankees 7:05. Critical series for both teams. Uh, Diamondbacks and Wa Washington Nationals critical series, I believe. White Sox and Red Sox could be a possible preview of the World Series. Not saying it is, but I'm just saying it could be. Indians and Reds critical series. Um, Giants versus Marlins. This could be critical for the Giants as they can get a three-game sweep and e and even elevate themselves even more in the NL uh, NL West. Orioles and uh, Texas Rangers. Important for the Orioles here. Go on the road, get some wins, try to get even closer and surprise some folks. Uh, Toronto Blue Jays, Kansas City Royals, uh, Pirates, and Brewers. Another, like I said, critical series for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hey, win some games, get back into the division. Shock some folks. Uh, New York Mets versus Colorado Rockies. If you're the Mets, you got to go in here and you got to blast the ball every day. You got to continue to beat up on a team who's already beat up as it is. Minnesota Twins, LA Angels, big series for the LA. Um, if you want to prove that you can finally win a division, this is the type of series you need to win. Detroit Tigers, Oakland Athletics. Uh, Padres and Dodgers, huge series. Uh, and then we have uh, Houston and Seattle. Both these games out west 
LA, San Diego, Houston, and Seattle. My opinion, they are the top two important games, and then you have the um, then you have the uh, let's see here the John. I'm sorry, the White Sox and the Red Sox. So White Sox, Red Sox is my number three game, and number two I would say Houston and Seattle, and then number one L.A. and San Diego. Uh, the Dodgers can really put a lot of distance between themselves and San Diego tonight, or San Diego can continue to climb up the standings. I know it's early in the season. I know that we're barely what three weeks into the season, but folks, when it comes down to it in the game of baseball. Baseball games are so hard on the body, especially you start getting to the summer months, etc. You need to win these early uh, series. You need to make sure you get these games because when it comes to September and you're two, three games out, and you're like, oh man, you know, we want, we wish we, we had more time in the season. We wish we had this and that. You have nobody to blame but yourself. If you're two or three or four games out, it's because you didn't win those early series. The excitement comes in September, October, even sometimes November. But seasons are won now. These are important games. And I really hope that these guys take this seriously. Because if they don't, they'll be looking up in September. They won't be in the playoffs. And it'll be their faults. So we got a lot of great baseball today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed the No BS Sports Zone by Rob Johnson. I will see you guys in a few days. Have a good one.